welcome back to Creepy Places New England. Now let's be honest, didn't winter just suck? It was way too long and way too cold. I like winter, but it was like, I'm glad it's finally over. Now look, it's finally green out, just in time for me to travel back to Europe. Anyway, we're now heading to the Sterling Opera House in Derby, Connecticut, joined by people like Steve and Heidi, ones you know, and some new friends like Joni and uh, Richard DiCarlo of the uh, Sterling Opera House. Well, enjoy this next episode and hopefully that you'll get some uh, creepy ghosts in this creepy old opera house. The Sterling Opera House is an historic opera building located at 116 Elizabeth Street in the town of Derby, Connecticut. The designer was Henry Edward Ficken. He created the building with an Italian Victorian influence. Not only that, but the interior seating plan was influenced by Richard Wagner, a German composer, theater director, and conductor born in 1813 and died in 1883. Wagner came up with the conception of a triangled seating arrangement which allowed for 1,250 seats all to enjoy an unobstructed view of the stage. The acoustics are also said to be good as a whisper on stage could be heard all the way to the back wall. The Opera House was named after Charles Sterling. He owned the Sterling Piano Company. He died in 1887 before ever seeing it open. It did open for performances on April 2nd, 1889. The cost? $45,000 back then or $1.1 million in today's economy. Now over the years, the Opera House housed a great many performers. One was Harry Houdini, an illusionist and stunt performer who died Halloween 1926. Houdini even had a trap door created on the stage of the Sterling Opera House to perform his show. Bob Hope, the famous comedian, singer, and actor who died April 22, 2003, also performed here. Hope even signed his name on the wall underneath the stage. In 1936, Amelia Earhart, the aviation pioneer who disappeared July 2, 1937, sp she spoke here in front of a women's club. There are also many others, including John Philip Sousa, as well as George and Gracie Allen. However, the location closed as an entertainment venue in 1945. At that time, the function of the structure changed as it served as the town of Derby's city hall and police station until 1960. On November 8, 1968, the building was added to the National Register of Historic Places. Since then, there have been many efforts to restore the building. One such effort was in the 1970s when a woman named Vivian Callums led efforts to prevent the Opera House from being demolished by urban developers. She had the help of President Nixon's Advisory Council on Historic Preservation. As of 2013, $1.7 million had been spent to restore the building's exterior. Various organizations, such as Save the Sterling and the Valley Arts Council, have been working to raise funds and awareness for the property. The location also has reports of numerous paranormal activity. One report is of a ghost of a young boy named Andy. Now Andy will sometimes and occasionally touch or play with toys that are left around the building. There's also reports of another ghost called the Green Lady. She's believed to be a woman from Brooklyn named Hetty who worked there. She had been seen at the building and, if she's made angry, she may throw items at people. Numerous paranormal groups have captured EVPs, people have expressed feelings of feeling strange, and they have been claimed to be touched. Now, here is the Sterling Opera House. Next creepy places adventure in the Kingdom of Connecticut. 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 And with me, besides me, here's my hands, is Heidi and our friend Cynthia Greetings. and Ralph Lauren. <laughs> That's my underwear size. Okay, so Steve Morrow. <laughs> and we are going to the Sterling Opera House, which I thought was in Sterling, Connecticut, but it's apparently in Derby. Derby, <laughs> Connecticut. And we have quite a long 
ride. And for us Rhode Islanders, that's bad, but luckily Heidi's from Massachusetts, so it's no big deal. And we got great company. And well, yes, we do got great company. Yes. Which always makes a trip more fun. Exactly. Well, we're still on our way to, what was it, Derby or Denby? Derby. Derby, Connecticut. Yeah, and about a half an hour or so ago. And it's bright out. It's very bright. Um, luckily, we're mostly driving on the highway um, to get to the Sterling Opera House. We take exit 47, according to Heidi's little Dr. Nightmare. See, I got the name right. I didn't call it Dr. Satan. <laughs> so, we should be there within about a half hour or so. Somebody's singing badly. I, I, I'm opera. I'm warming up. <laughs> me, 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 me. Yeah, I keep practicing. Me, 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 uh, we better shut the camera off before we everybody shuts the, the video off. Well, there's our location. The Sterling Opera House in Derby, uh, Connecticut. Not Sterling, Connecticut. I learned that. And uh, we had got a little lost, but we luckily... We didn't get lost. Well, we, we took the wrong tour. turn and we ended up near Yale. My, my alma mater, not. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, we're here. Well, here we are at the Sterling Opera House. Um, we're like directly in front. Well, we just learned that the, at the Opera House, a lot of people have performed here or spoken here, such as George Burns, John L. Sullivan, Gracie Allen, um, Amelia Earhart, and um, uh, Bob Hope, the John Philip Bob, Sousa. Bob Hope. But that's Bob Hope, the Bob Hope. So there's a lot of well known people who've come here at one time or another. Let me get a closer up of the door. Beautiful architecture. What? It's in the back of the trunk. I want to be like Cynthia and go across the street to get a better view. Good idea. She's smart, I heard. I heard. <laughs> And um, Tara from Rise Up Connecticut is going to be joining us. Got a beautiful front entrance. Beautiful building too. And it turns out at certain times of the uh, day and weekends, you can park in the front with no issue with parking meters. More of the surrounding neighborhood. Let's cross again. What? Your battery and your camera's dead? Bummer. Yep, does it take um it says exhausted. <laughs> it does, battery exhausted. Oh. It doesn't feel cold, cold. Feel okay, battery does it take. It feels creepy cold when you're not when you're not cold, weather cold. Ah. Look at that. Ooh, that's a nice view. Look at that. Make sure I don't fall. Yeah, don't fall in the uh, orchestra yeah. pit. That wouldn't be good. No.
Wow. That took care of the girls in the in the day. You know, there's a we had a uh, troupe. This is a, um, opera house is a generic term for theater. So this is a vaudeville burlesque house, more than a opera house. Okay, so, so who's going to be doing the burlesque dancing? So you guys. You're going to see you know, vaudeville. So anybody you know, you saw Joe. Thank you. Thank you. This is an exit to the fourth street from the alleyway. If you get a problem, you go this way. <laughs> One of the exits, right? Oh, here? Yeah. That door goes outside and it opens up. This is the understage area. This is where Houdini's trap door. No, Jesus. And he built a lot of trap doors in theaters, I hear, so it was all over the place. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> and on the wall behind you, Rian Charles, is the shooting schedule sign. <laughs> oh. It's really efficient. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's written on the wall. <laughs> 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 okay. Let's see where the. Not like she's going to suddenly appear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We got Bob Hope and Bob Hope and Bing Crow these hands. Really? Ooh. Let's see that. We'll oh. We gotta touch it. I wanna. Well, I'm gonna just go with it. Where is it? The lake. And also the other people we have to understand that the yeah. other people. Bing, Bing Bing Cross is here. All also the other people, the other names and stuff. All the other guys. You know, you know, they, you know, there were people that were here that didn't use their, didn't have stage names yet. Mm -hmm. Ah. So a lot of famous guys here before they were famous. Is the actual company, I think. <clears throat> oh, that is so cool. A lot of history, huh? Yeah. And you can actually buy these posts. Some of these posts are still on, you know, online. Wow. They make reproductions of them. I like the strong man. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I mean, if you look closer, small playbills and stuff. Or Uncle Tom's cabin with John L. Sullivan and stuff. The boxer. I think I get it. Thank you. City jail so from 19 till 1965. The theater was open till 1940s. 1945, I think, was the last performance. Oof. And Heavy in here. Uh, before that, this is the firehouse. The police, the firehouse, the police station was in the basement for us. Is that real negative down there? Real negative down there, but it's also it's got asbestos and. Yeah. Ooh, asbestos. Yay. Ah, here it is, the one he was mentioning. But, uh, ah. This one has the um, bars on it still. All right. Where do you want me? This one, you can lock yourself in here. Keep yourself in here all night. Oh. You just have to touch it, don't you? This is just that sound, you know? Jesus Christ, Steve. Just make sure you can get me out again. Should I sit in the Thank you. 
Yeah, those cells. Yeah, so. A shoe. Oh, that's just uh, something to do with That wasn't. Uh, people said a lot of stuff is being. You'll see cigarettes and stuff. You got paranormal. They just don't. Put, they put the shoe Sweet. down. Of course, now everybody found where the jail, where the bars are, so everybody's getting themselves well, locked in. This is the most active show. out so, yeah. here. Wow. This is the only work. Yeah, we had a knocking and knocking and knocking and knocking. There is a bat here. So. A bat. There's a box. There's a bat here. The so. Z bats are going to come and get Z you. No, the bat's usually. Well, he's all over the place. <laughs> Just, he used to sleep here. I saw him. Uh, all, uh, we had a bat and he was in here. Oops. Yes? Right here. Hi. I just want to let you know that I think you're the pillar of our community. City Irks. Either that or Giant Palace. Oh, uh, I gotta go. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, I was gonna take a picture of you on there. Sorry. It's okay. You know, you charge a little off her GQ and all that. There you go. What's this? Whoa. Wires. We're coming. We're coming. Oh, we're going to start setting up. Stop. Stop being blurry, blurry. Okay. speak up kind of loud. Okay. Well, we just wanted to take a minute here to introduce some of the people that we are doing the investigation with tonight. And there's someone that you may have known or know or have read as she's an author of uh, five different books. Joni Mahan, welcome. Thank you. How, how is it going so far? What are you uh, feeling is, tonight? It's been an amazing experience. Very, very haunted location. And great people. Thank you very much. She's not talking about you. <laughs> Thanks, Charles. So, why don't you tell us a little bit about the book? So, when did you first become an author? Uh, well, I've been writing all my life, but I published my first book two years ago, and it's it was a trilogy, a dystopian trilogy uh, called Lightning Strikes, and the second one's Ember Rain, and the third one's Angel Storm. But I really got more popular when I wrote The Soul Collector, and that's been very well. It's still in the top ten on Amazon in its genre, so nice. it's a par true paranormal story about uh, something that followed me home from an investigation. So, really? A true yeah, story? Yeah. A true story, yeah. Nice. How do you protect yourself so that they, they don't follow you home? Well, I use my guides a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, as we saw earlier, we asked the uh, thousand rods if uh, my guides were here. Right. Um, I wear I wear crucifix. I have protective stones. I say prayers mm -hmm. before I come. Uh, usually I sage before and after, but I didn't at this time. So. Personally, for me, I, I had a spirit follow me home, mm -hmm. and I didn't. I did a uh, ceremonial at the end of the uh, investigation, saying, "You yeah, know, please stay here. Please don't follow us home." But I found out about uh, a year, year and a half later that she actually did follow me home. She was um, starting to cause a little bit of havoc in my life. Mm -hmm. Is there anything I could have done or should have done different, or is that just sometimes the I case? think sometimes they're going to follow you regardless of what you do. Mm -hmm. uh, they recognize you as somebody that may be able to help them or have a message, or maybe yeah. they just like you and they want to hang out with yeah. you. I did connect with her, mm -hmm. and she did what seemingly wanted to tell me um, about her husband. She needed to get it off her chest, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So I just wonder, um, what's going to be happening in the future? Any more books? Yeah, I just, uh, I just finished a book uh, about the uh, haunted Victorian mansion and gardener. I spent a lot of time there investigating, and uh, I compiled all the stories from the homeowners, former homeowners, investigators, psychics, mediums, and I'm in the process of getting that published, so great. That, that'll be my next book. Well, let's get on with our investigation tonight. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, this may show up in uh, one of my other books. You never Ooh. know. <laughs> Look at the attic up there. That's a creepy room now, I bet. Want to go in there? <laughs> Yes.
about over here? Is that one? I guess not. Hang on. Huh? I thought I saw one. There's electricity up here for sure, by the way. I see a light. Yes. Okay. Ooh. What a view. Um, Careful. It is. See you here? I don't know where. Right there. Ah, so we can plug it in here. Yeah, want me to get it? The, the camera, I mean the other camera? Yeah, yeah, but we're just gonna be able to record from here, so we're not gonna get the green lady one. Uh, That's alright. We, okay. we gotta do what we gotta do. All right. Let me test the new light here that Tara let me use, borrow. Ugh, that is awesome. Thank you. Hi, yes, thank you. I see evil coming down. Oh, it's just Cynthia. Ah. Oh, sorry. I'm testing out this new light that Tara's let me borrow. Yeah, I was hoping to put one on the second floor, but... Um... It's kind of in the middle, and I don't want to, um... Okay. Be careful with all the holes. Greetings. Some of us are from Rhode Island, some of us are from Massachusetts, and some of us are from Connecticut. We are very happy to be in this beautiful building that you all uh, are present in, and we like to communicate with you. So we would like to know, um, whoever's here, could you please tell us your name? My name is Joni. I just wanted to introduce myself. And uh, I want to thank you, too, for allowing us in your space. How long have you been here? Hi, it's Cindy. Um, I was wondering, what's your job? What's your function here? Something we do uh, in, when we investigate is um, we say pass when we're done and then the next person can ask a question and that way everybody knows when it's their turn and nobody speaks over each other. Just this Andy, I got a, what is this, blue or green? It's a blue ball. So, granted it apparently needs some air in it, but would you like to play? I like to play catch. Would you throw that back to me, please? <laughs> Could you bring the ball back to me, please? Or do you want to throw that lady? Follow me with the ball. Yeah, it's a case to go up now. I'm not so bad. My phone's off. I had it. So, it's a good one. Yeah, it's quite a good sentence. So, I feel like it's 
people up in the balcony that have been watching us? Are you waiting for us to perform? Don't tempt me. I can sing. Bad yeah. man. <laughs> Do you want comedy or drama? Shall we perform Romeo and Juliet for you? Go ahead. Come on, honey. Say the famous line. Romeo, Romeo, where art thou, Romeo? I'll be Romeo. <laughs> I'm over here, Juliet. <laughs> That's not the line. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm over here, Juliet. I got stuck in traffic while texting. <laughs> I told you not to text and drive. That's dangerous. I found somebody easier than you because you keep being on the balcony and never come down. Oh, well, that's just fine. I'm going to go on my own way. Whatever. <laughs> Talk to the hands. Talk to the hands. <laughs> Hello. Can you say hello to me? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> I'm not uh -oh. sure what that was going to say. It didn't That's sound not... very friendly. No, it didn't. Do you know who I am? What's my name? Rich. Rich. Wow. There you go. <laughs> right. That was pretty clear, too. Yeah. Yes. Do you remember me? Do you see all? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Camera's on and recording. But I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Yeah, you really, did. I didn't do it. <laughs> Goodbye. Okay. Okay. You're set for now. All right. We'll be we'll, we'll be we will be nearby. Okay. Seems to have gotten darker. Is anybody in with me? I'm all alone. Jack, it looks so much noise. Anybody here? Can you anybody hear at all? Can you make a knocking sound for me?
or someone, right? Back me. I just got dizzy. <laughs> okay, that's... Okay, this just went off. Yeah. You okay? Yeah. I'm hearing voices coming from you. I know, the recorder started going on by itself. Well, no, I meant the, the, like, playing back the recording. Did you touch it by accident? I did. Okay. Did you want, you want to get out or you want some more time? No, I can get out because I know you don't have a lot of battery time. Well, well, can't see. Hold on. Mm-hmm. I was, I was, I, I was, um, let me see, I actually was, alright, I was looking at something that was like over here, because I thought I was, thought I was like seeing a shadow or something over here, mm -hmm. I did that, I actually got dizzy and almost fell, mm -hmm. catching myself on the wall. And that's when this thing went off. And no, then I moved the recorder from over there to like in the front, and as I did that, I didn't think I touched any buttons, but... Sorry, going off. Well, we're each going to take a jail cell. Okay. Oh, but we're going to do it all together. Okay. Um, choose a jail cell. I'll go to my cell. Okay. I'll have my cell phone. Is that going next to me at least? Yeah, I'll go next to you. You can sell me if you want. Where are you going? No cellmates. Oh, come on. Cellmates. Lockdown. Lockdown. Get in your cell. Get in your cell right now. I'm so excited. I am wrongly accused. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> okay. If you're good, we're going to feed you some slop in about an hour. What'd you do, miss? I'm innocent. Completely What'd you do? innocent. Yeah, that's what they all say. I'm completely innocent. Uh-huh. Please. I don't belong here. I know. You belong next door where you're earning money illegally. I didn't. I didn't do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't kill that guy. You, you know what? <laughs> but did she shoot the deputy? No, she did not. All right, Steve, you need to get in your jail cell. Okay, fine. Shot the sheriff. I'm going to go in the first one. So, um, hey, let's do that one thing we each. We'll start with Tara, work our way down. Okay. We'll ask a question, and then when the person says pass, the next person can ask a question. Okay. something we might pick up on the recorder.
let us know you're here. I know you're here, but let everybody else know. Last time I was in the jail cell, I spoke with an African American gentleman who moved from Georgia to be up here with his aunt at work. Can you possibly come back and speak with me again? <coughs> Or is Lydia Sherman here? Pass. What was your bail sent set for? What was that? that? The following EVP was also heard audibly by most of us in the jail area. It sounds like a woman is weeping. Headphones are best to hear this one. What was your bail sent set for? What the hell was that? What was your bail sent set for? What the hell was that? What was your bail sent set for? What the hell was that? <laughs> Is there anyone owned up to that? Huh? Has anyone owned up to that? What was it? What was it? That was a woman. <laughs> that sounded like somebody, a female laughing. I'm not kidding. Secretary and stuff was like yep. a little wake room. I'm guessing the secretary was back right here. Yeah. <laughs> and then in here, there's a little folding. Yep. And right here, where the floor's taken in, this is where his desk was here. There's a little washroom right there. And this is where the stairs are, right under here. So you could even, this board isn't even nailed down. You could probably lift it and see. You can see it's all caving in now. Yeah. yeah. So his desk, this was probably where his, his desk was. Yeah, his desk was over here, yeah. and that was his escape yeah. room. <laughs> oh, so we're just gonna... So we have this... Uh, oh, yes. We have this little device right here. Yes. Actually, why don't you hold it, because I can film you. It's a stud finder. I don't know why I gave it to Steve, but it's a stud finder. I know, it's just going to go off and off. <laughs> hey, what? Hey? <laughs> well. Okay, you shouldn't be doing that, you know. Try to, du try to duplicate that. <laughs> You're so flattering. <laughs> Probably two jacks. What if the batteries are dying? And that's just the way it acts. Did you know anything of General David Humphreys? Happier with that? Back away. This is like in the jail there. <laughs> Anybody here? We're up here before this is where we got that they wanted to, to eat their lunch. That's what they do here. Yeah. It's a nice view, I understand. Ah. Oh, nice view. Oh, jeez. <laughs> That's right. 
Ah, uh, the carnival shut down. Can you have it? Can you have it? Let me shut Every the light off. Every day coming out of rain, it's freaking cold. <laughs> you need to come to a different place. Wow, that's kind of dangerous, isn't it? I know, I'm so down. It's a nice view. Sorry, no, that was okay. I'm gonna. I turned the infrared off because if you turn the infrared off, you can see the lights outside better. Oh. Heidi, you're up. Uh, hi, I'm Heidi, um, and I'd like to sit down and eat some lunch with you because I'm really hungry. Is that alright if I have some lunch with you guys? Is there anybody here out here with us? And did the green lady follow us up? Pass. When I was up here earlier, we got the name Dave and another name that began with an F-R-A, I believe, or F-R anyway. Are you folks still here with us? What did you guys do up here with Andy and Caitlin? ring the bell? I've never heard it make any sound. Can you maybe do that for us? Pass. Where are you from? Are you a local person or did you come from somewhere else? Which is better, the Boston Red Sox or the New York Yankees? Pass. What year is it? Pass. It is. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we'll wrap it up. Okay. Over and out. This EVP, caught in the casting room, was also heard audibly by a few people. It sounds like a woman going, hmm. Do I get the job yet? Or do you want one of the ladies? Hmm. Do you hear anyone hear a sound there? Do I get the job yet? Or do you want one of the ladies? Mm. Do you hear anyone hear a sound there? Do I get the job yet? Or do you want one of the ladies? Mm. Do you hear anyone hear a sound there?